For the second time in three weeks, the most significant football game in the entire NFL was played in New England's Schaefer Stadium. Where there was once gloom, Coach Chuck Fairbank's second season has brought smiles to the Northeast. For the New England Patriots have suddenly and most surprisingly become a symbol of success in pro football. A sellout crowd came to witness a battle of unbeaten teams. It's really no surprise that Chuck Knox's Rams are starting the season's third week undefeated, for Los Angeles has been simply awesome. Some experts are so high on the Rams, they've picked the team to go unbeaten all season long. The biggest reason may be the emergence of a new fearsome foursome. Free-spirited Fred Dreyer is at defensive end, flanked by Larry Brooks at right tackle. Brooks's counterpart is the only remaining member of the Rams' original fearsome foursome, Merlin Olsen, now in his 13th season. Jack Youngblood completes a front four that may eclipse the deeds of the Deacon, Lamar Lundy, and Rosie Greer. For the Patriots, the big story has been a very small man. Five foot five, Mac Heron has simply stood the NFL on its ear. Mini Mac has gotten his first crack at starting, and his running, receiving, and kick returning are a major reason his team is undefeated and in first place. While the Patriots offense, led by Heron and Jim Plunkett, has been explosive, the most pleasant factor to Fairbanks has been a resolute defense, especially tough against the run. The Rams, of course, are traditionally tough on defense and are coming off a shutout of New Orleans. While their defense against the run is a strong point, their own ground game led by Larry McCutcheon has been superb. So today, something would have to give as two teams, both undefeated, both ranking first in their conference in defensing the run, meet in this week's NFL Game of the Week, the New England Patriots versus the Los Angeles Rams. The Patriots, the only unbeaten, untied team in the American Conference had first possession. With Mac Heron ranking fourth, and Sam, the Bam Cunningham, second in rushing, and Plunkett second in passing, the Los Angeles defense faced a multiple threat indeed. But on the first series, it was Plunkett's running that predominated the action. After Plunkett was hit hard on a keeper, his attempted rollout was met by Jack Youngblood for an eight-yard loss. Plunkett's increased mobility has been a surprise this season, but here it put the Pats in a hole. And even though Heron slashed up the middle for 12 yards, New England was forced to give up the ball. Starting with good field position on their 46, Los Angeles began a drive that consisted of nine consecutive running plays. First, Larry McCutcheon, the NFC's leading runner, then Jim Bertelson ran for huge chunks of yardage against the Patriots' stacked defense. Finally, from the one, Tony Baker scored the game's first TD. Another look at the score shows Baker was hit, but kept his feet moving to propel him into the end zone. That's why Baker has become the Rams' short yardage bread and butter runner. He doesn't play much, but when he does, it's usually near the end zone with results. After nine straight successful running plays, Chuck Fairbanks was right where he least wanted to be, down seven points to the explosive Rams. But this is 1974, and the Patriots can play with anyone. Versatile Mac Heron started the proceedings with a 34-yard return. Then Jim Plunkett, who has hit on a whopping 61% of his passes this year, took to the air. Although Bob Windsor was hurt on the reception, he later returned to the game. Plunkett turned to Heron on the ground. Once again, the Ram defense, led by the charging young blood, defensed it perfectly. Plunkett with fine protection and a fine reception by Darrell Stingley put the Pats in Los Angeles territory.
Mattingly, too, paid the price for his catch, but several plays later in the second quarter, he returned and burned the Rams' secondary again. key factor in New England's sudden six points was that Jack Youngblood had jumped off sides on the play and some on the Rams defense relaxed anticipating the penalty. But Stingley's touchdown was bona fide and New England had proved to themselves their opponents and their fans in Schaefer Stadium that they were for real. Their victories over the Giants and Dolphins were no flukes. This New England team could play with anyone in the National Football League. For the remainder of the first half, however, Jim Plunkett and the Patriot attack could do little. The Ram defense regained its composure, and for the next 14 minutes, this game was a perfect example of what football is all about, a basic battle between the offensive and defensive lines. Led by veterans John Morris, Bill Lenkaitis, and Tom Neville, the Patriots' forward wall was spiced with talented youth, such as John Hanna, Leon Gray, and Bill Dulac. Their adversaries, the Ram defense, not only led their conference in stopping the run, but it hammered opposing passers a league leading 11 times. For the rest of the first half, it was a battle between the men in the pit, and ferocious defense prevailed. The Rams were not alone in dealing out punishment. New England's 3-4 stack defense has been tough all year, and today was no exception. Led by number 71, Sugar Bear Hamilton, and number 85, Julius Adams, they exerted tremendous pressure on John Hadel all day long. After Hadel was forced to abandon the pass and run the ball himself, something he dearly dislikes, he turned to his powerful ground attack, which had produced the long touchdown drive in the first quarter. But the Patriot defense was ready and willing to pay the price. In a virtuoso display of hard hitting and gang tackling, the Patriot defense matched that of the Rams to thwart any further scoring in the first half. The only significant offensive gains came when John Hadle, off a play fake, found McCutcheon loose in the flat for a 22-yard advance. But a fumbled snap was recovered by Ray Hamilton and ended the Rams' short spurt. As he was in the opening game upset against Miami, Sugar Bear was in the right spot most of the day. On the next play, Plunkett attempted to capitalize on the break and just missed connections with Randy Vataha, who was out in front of his defender. Later, John Hadle, too, tried the bomb to Harold Jackson, who was well covered by number 37, Willie Osley. Osley, a rookie, had been burned repeatedly by Marlon Briscoe in the opener against Miami, and this was not lost on John Hadle, who came right back to Jackson, who this time got behind the first-year cornerback. This play, too, was negated by good defense on the part of the Patriots. Just before the end of the second quarter, New England got hot with a pitch to Heron for 17 yards. Then Plunkett again went for the deep six to Pataha, who again should have had it. Steve Priest defensed on the play. Plunkett's line was giving him more and more time to throw now, and he hit Bob Windsor over the middle for a nice gain that was nullified by a holding penalty. <laughs> 
With one last chance before the half ended, Plunkett rolled right and underthrew into the hands of Ram safety Steve Priest. It was fitting that a fine defensive play ended the half with a score tied at seven apiece. Ram quarterback John Hadle began the second half still searching for an answer to the Patriots' newfangled defense. The Rams, who were the highest scoring team in pro football last season, had scored but seven points on what used to be a pitiful, porous Pat defense. But there's no need to pity the Pats anymore. And on the Rams' first series of the new half, they went nowhere. After just three plays, Los Angeles was forced to punt, and Mack the Knife sliced through the Rams for a 38-yard return. Repeating the play from our end zone camera, we can get a look at what Heron looks like if you're on the bomb squad. Heron took one step to the left to get the Rams leaning that way, then went for the wall on the right. Getting good blocks from John Tarver and later on from Will Foster, Heron went untouched until Bob Stein saved a touchdown. Heron's return gave the Pats possession inside the Ram 30-yard line, but they could not get any farther as Plunkett could find no one open and Larry Brooks put him down on his head. Plunkett got the lost yardage back with an option play on third down, but he did not get the first down, and New England had to try a field goal. From the 29, a 39-yard field goal, John Smith put the Patriots in the lead 10-7. John Smith, an English soccer player, was discovered on a worldwide tour conducted by the Patriots when Gino Capaletti retired. Known as the search for Superfoot, and despite the new rule placing kickoffs on the 35-yard line, Smith repeatedly kicked the ball out of the end zone, denying the Rams returns into good field position. Starting from the 20, Hadel began to move the Rams with a short, crisp passing game. Nickel and diming with an out to Harold Jackson, good for 14 yards, plus 15 for a personal foul on Ron Bolton, then a pop over the middle to Jack Snow for 17 more. Hadel had the Rams on the Patriot 35. Two running plays gained 10 more yards. Then Hadel went for it all, aiming one for Lance Rensel at the Patriot goal line. Hadel and Rensel just missed connections. And on a repeat, we can see that the play might well have succeeded. Hadel got plenty of time, and Rensel was indeed open. But the pass was thrown too high, and the normally sure-handed receiver could not hold on. Patriot fans loved it. And when on the next play, a 41-yard field goal try by David Ray was blocked, they got even more to cheer about. It was a scoring chance the Rams could not afford to miss, for as the remaining time in the third quarter ticked away, the Rams were simply unable to move. And the Patriot defense very nearly came up with a big play. First, a disappointed Sam Hunt, number 50, missed an easy interception. Then blitzing Steve King separated Hadel from the ball. Officials ruled that Hadel's arm had moved forward, making the loose ball an incomplete pass, not a fumble. Hadel survived with his body intact, but the same could not be said for the Ram offense, which had coughed and sputtered to a dead stop. Late in the third quarter, pinpoint Plunkett passing had the Patriots moving again. Darrell Stingley went to his knees for 13 yards. Then Reggie Rucker stayed on his feet for 19 more. 
Plunkett's passes set up another Smithfield goal. New England led 13 to 7. And with the Patriot defense still playing tough, it looked like that lead might stand up. Then in the fourth quarter, two more Plunkett passes ballooned the lead. Sam Cunningham circled out of the backfield, and the big fullback carried for a 37 yard gain. From the Ram 21, Plunkett went to his old college chum, Randy Rabbit Bataha. The Rabbit Bunny hopped in, and New England led 20 to 7. Last year, Patriot backers were down on Jim Plunkett, but he does have the tools, and this year he's making them work. On a repeat, notice Plunkett's quick, certain drop back his poise in the pocket, and a classic release as he nails Vataha for the score. Each year, bigger, faster men are expected to dislodge Vataha from his starter's role. But their physical strengths have yet to offset the fact Vataha and Plunkett played four years of college football together. They've been playing together now for eight years, though both are just four-year pros and have developed into a fearsome combination. It all added up to a 21-yard touchdown and a 20-7 New England lead with 11 minutes to play. Now the pressure of holding a fourth-quarter lead would be the final test for the upstart Patriots, and Hadel tested them well. But after an 18-yard hookup with Jackson, a curious turnover tournament began. First, Hadel threw into double coverage. Ron Bolton intercepted. But with a chance to run off some time, the Patriots made their first big mistake when Heron fumbled, and Dave Elmendorf recovered on the New England 30. Surely now the Patriots would crack, but with great field position, the Rams returned the favor when Jim Bertelson fumbled and veteran George Webster recovered. The Rams had made the mistake the Patriots were supposed to make, but New England still had one more blunder in their game plan, forced to punt. They let Rob Scribner escape for 10 yards and then committed the unpardonable sin of personal fouling on the play, tacking 15 more yards onto Scribner's return. From the Patriot 36, it took Hadel just one play to score. Rensel's touchdown brought the Rams back to 20 to 14, less than a touchdown behind, and with over four minutes still to play, the Rams were alive. Plunkett could not move the Patriots. The Rams took over with two and a half minutes left and 57 yards to go to win it. First, Jackson caught his sixth pass of the day, then Renzel took a crossing pattern to the Patriot 10-yard line. But offsetting penalties nullified the play. It was the Rams' biggest mistake of the day, for though Hadel got some of that back, this deflected pass to Bertelson carried only to the 25-yard line, not to the 10. After two incompletions, Hadel was sacked by Arthur Moore and Julius Adams, so it all came down to one play, 
fourth down from the Patriot 32. A minute and a half to go. Were the Patriots for real? The answer was an emphatic yes. Prentice McRae intercepted Hadle's desperation pass. All that remained was to run out the clock. The Patriots had done it again. On opening day, they had beaten last year's Super Bowl champion, the Miami Dolphins. People called it an unbelievable upset. But on this day, they had beaten the team many think will be this year's Super Bowl champion. Maybe the word upset no longer applies. The Patriots are now 3-0. and Though they have one of the most demanding schedules in the league this season, they've already beaten two of the toughest parts of it. The idea of New England Patriots in the Super Bowl chase is not as far-fetched as it seemed before the season began, especially in the light of their 20-14 win, not upset over the powerful Los Angeles Rams. National car rental player of the game is Patriot nose guard Ray Hamilton, number 71, who had seven tackles, one sack, and a fumble recovery in today's game. He's the man who makes the Patriots' new 3-4 stack defense work, a defense that held the powerful Los Angeles Rams to just 14 points. <laughs> 